doing Duff here and what you see in front of you is my new 3D printer. This is a Prusa MK um, 3S kit. I opted for the kit version because it would be a challenge and it also saves you roughly $250 off the price. And I've been trying to fund my th any of my any of my 3D printer related expenses from sales on the 3D printed store that I have. So that's why I needed to save some money. Move you over there so you don't get bounced around. All right. So I'm actually just going to get started today, just kind of organizing and unpacking. Um, what I've read is this can take, you know, an afternoon. It could take a whole day, depending on your mechanical ability. You know, I have some mechanical ability, but I also have been known to um, run into some problems now and then with some projects. If you're familiar with my channel, you are familiar with that. Now, I did do a little bit of research ahead of time. And one thing that was very clear right away was Prusa includes incredibly detailed instructions uh, for assembling their printers. This, this is the assembly manual. I mean, it's, it's, it, it might be the most uh, complete assembly instructions. What I, uh, what I looked at it online, it might be the uh, most complete set of assembly instructions that I've ever seen with anything that I've ever had to put together. So I'm hoping that's a good thing. I'm hoping that helps. Here's the, um, the gummy bears that uh, Joe Prusa includes in every uh, printer. And uh, we're just gonna get all the parts out. We're gonna get the box out of the way. And no, I'm not gonna be filming uh, the entire process step-by-step. Step. Um, that would be ridiculous. Um, but I will be filming, you know, like sections of it, just like kind of summaries of, of, of where I'm at and what I'm doing. All these boxes are in here extremely well packed. Uh, here's, I'm assuming these are the rods. I don't, well, maybe they're not the rods, I don't know. Oh, these might be the, the sliders that go on the rails. Um, oh yeah, they, they did actually give me a, some filament. I didn't know that I, I would get filament with this, but I did. So that's nice. Let's get this out of the way. And let's take a look at what we got here. Everything is very well labeled. The plastic parts set, you got the fasteners, the motors. I assume this is probably the build plate right here. And uh, yeah, frame components. And the Delta power supply, which is a super high quality power supply. Really, uh, here, here's, here's my manual. Like I said, again, close up of this manual, crazy. But more than likely, I think what I will be doing is, and, and Cindy's gonna actually help me with some of this, I guess, talking about small sections, but I'm not gonna have the camera running as I, as I um, tighten every screw and bolt, because that'd be ridiculous. And I looked online and there, there's some people that actually have videos of complete builds of, um, uh, of their Prusa MK3 printers, but they are hours long. And, I'm not interested in doing an hours long video. So, okay, so right now, here you go. We got the boxes and we will uh, progress from here. I will start working through the instructions and let you know how it goes. I mean, everything is just labeled perfectly. It's so clear, wow. Okay. It's gonna take some patience, but I think it's gonna be fun. I did read that they include all of the tools that you need, including a high precision screwdriver, a needle nose, pliers, even though I have quite a few of them, and um, various Allen keys that are used in the build. Zip ties, this almost looks like glue stick, doesn't it? It's in 
check, I guess. I don't, it's not in English. I don't know what that is. Lubricant and belts and screws. Again, each bag is clearly labeled with what it is. So yeah, this should be a very unique experience, I think. I've only ever built um, from scratch and it wasn't as scratch as this. My, um, my uh, Creality Ender, Ender 2 printer, I built that from a kit. Everything else has been basically uh, mostly assembled. So, and I, I did not have a great experience with the Ender 2, but the, this kit is gonna be light years ahead of what I dealt with with the Ender 2 as well. So, shouldn't be so bad. Now it says here that the uh, lubricant is for maintenance down the road. Do you not need the lubricant now? All the bearings are already lubricated. Everything's labeled, yep, sure is. So they have all the fasteners in their own bag and then they also have a, another bag that's just labeled spare, just in case you need some, which is awesome. And you have, you have, these are all 3D printed parts that are printed on other Prusa printers. Um, I think all the stuff is printed on, um, are printed in pet g and if you've ever seen the prusa print farm where the stuff is made it's pretty amazing all right first up is the yz frame which is this i mean look at look at the the um, detail on this I need um, some M5 16R screws. They have a bag that's actually labeled for the Y axis, and it shows you all the parts that are in this bag, uh, including, I believe, these are accurate size representations, so you can um, hold them up here to make sure you got the right size bolt or screw. It's amazing. Step one done. Epic. Just plodding along, nothing, nothing technically challenging at this point. These instructions are amazing. It's just, it's, the detail is something that other manufacturers should, should have looked at to emulate. So basically, I just want to get to this point where I have the, the, um, the, the, the base frame of the printer to this point. I'm gonna attach these screws back here and uh, call it a night for night uh, for tonight. I just wanted to, just wanted to break the ice. This will this will be a project that probably will run into the weekend. So good time so far. Okay, here is my official stopping point for night one. Base frames assembled and. Uh, the feet are installed and the little um, cage nuts or whatever you call them for the power supply are installed as well. The adventure continues. How you doing Duff here? Back for day two of the build. We have probably another maybe hour, hour and a half we can, we can put into the build. So um, Cindy's gonna actually come in and participate in this as well. So should be fun. Did you drop one? Yeah. Oh, here? Yep. I saw that's that one. one thing I want to be very careful about is not dropping screws. Oh, I got this bag here too, just in case. Yeah. Well, no, they're, they're labeled what they are, so leave, leave that one on the floor. On if it's on the floor, that means okay. it's empty and I don't need it anymore. Okay. So Cindy's here helping me. We're getting ready for the next step. Are you late? No, because that's stuff that I'm still pulling, that I'm pulling from, so. So right here is where we're at, Cindy. Like, this is what we're doing. We're using these pieces. Oh and, my and gosh, these pieces. Tiny. Yeah. You're in installing these square nuts into these slots, like it shows here. Oh, like down in that. Mm -hmm. Oh, tweezers. I well, that, they, they give you a... Um, yeah, because I can't hold things like that, so. And you might have to press it in. It says you can use pliers, but be careful, because yeah, because those are, because those are three D printed parts. Well, I'll, well, I'll, they don't fit I'll, in that way, but in the picture, yeah. Hmm, interesting. And you have to kind of press them in, I think. Yeah, I'm, I'm giving it some effort, but get the rest well, of it has to go in square. It won't fit I know, any other way. I'm, 
just saying at least the width of it. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? This is the first part of the build where you're you're pressing fasteners into 3D printed parts, and from uh, ta -da. good. Well, and it says you want to make sure it's centered. Like when you look at the hole here, that you see the center of the. Right. You want but to see also it, uh, at the shit. top of it. You. Yeah, like they talk about putting an Allen key through here just to make sure it's centered. Oh, okay. Well, you have it out. Yeah, I have Allen keys in. This is some tedious work. You like tedious work? I do. Okay, we're mounting our first 3D printed parts to the frame. These are the Y-Rod holders. We had to put some very, very tiny nuts inside of them, and we have equally small screws that you uh, attach to the frame. Cindy's doing very well. Are you having fun? I'm having a great time. Awesome. Okay, we're moving on to the Y-Belt Idler. I'm just going to go ahead and stick it in. Well, no, it's not, it's, you're not putting the, the screws in yet. No screws. You just said... Nuts. I said nuts. Oh, you said nuts. Yeah. You said screws. Nope. What? 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 Okay, so the nuts. Let's just set them in there. Because that's what I was wondering. I did see metal there. If you can't press, press the nuts in, don't use excessive force. Take an M3 screw, thread it from the opposite side to pull it in. Well, that would make sense. Okay, we have uh, now we have installed the Y-axis motor on the frame. And Cindy is starting the, uh, the bearings that go on the Y carriage. This is something that in the manual they're very cautious about you need to make sure that you don't over tighten these bearings because you can deform them and then that means that the carriage would not slide freely on the rails and that would uh, cause all kind of problems so we're going to pre proceed with caution on this section very gentle work okay cindy is inserting smooth rods into bearings the medium size right now medium size rods into the don't bearings don't tilt it don't push it too hard we have to make sure you're going straight too so evidently there's balls inside these yeah, these bearings. bearings. Okay, well I didn't realize that there's bearings balls inside of them. Balls, doesn't it? Ball bearings? That's what I was Well these are called from, these are called like sliders. A and all that kind of stuff. It's the same yeah. idea, isn't it? They call them carriage bearings or linear bearings. Alright, so nice and even? Mm hmm No, no, it doesn't really matter because once okay. we put it in there it it, it only it'll it'll, it'll, it'll all have to be. Right, because this has to go on and so now you flip it. Let me look. And it looks like the double the doubles are on that side. Wait, it has a long side for it. Yeah. Okay, so if, oh, it goes in the center of it. Yeah, it lays so the in these things thing we just is did. Towards the back. Because it looks like a double. That's the, the double, right there. So they uh, so you flip it. Okay. And lay it in. You want to do it, or you want me to do it? Yeah, but it's okay. You want to put it in there? That's fine. So the skinny part, so the big part, has the. Is this facing the right way? Yeah. Right? It is. Yeah. So the doubles are on that side. Good. Yeah, okay. That's what it cool. says, right? Yeah. I just wanted to make sure. Press the rods in with your thumb so they're seated as far as they'll go. Not going to go all the way in, but part of the way. Cool. I know. That one looks like it should go. Securing the white carriage. Find the package of zip ties and take out four pieces. Right here? These? No. Those are zip ties. No, it's not. It's a belt. Oh, zip oh, they ties are like that. they're in one of those bags. Oh, this one, yeah. yeah. Okay, here we go. Nice. Slide the zip tie through the holder. There's a slot. Connect the zip tie and tighten it. The head should be inside the frame. Okay. They go through this little slot here. I need four, correct? Yeah. So let me. I gotta read it. Remember, this is my reading eye. All right, going under with the big butt on the outside of it. Well, it actually winds up on the inside though. Right, because you're gonna wrap it around, but mm -hmm. with the thing facing. Like this. Yep. Mm -hmm. Isn't that how they have it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, we're still filming. Hi. Hi. Okay. We have completed the Y axis assembly part of the manual. According to the manual, you're supposed to technically get some gummy bears out now to celebrate, but we're gonna skip that. But uh, yeah, it was a little challenging. Getting this belt on is a little weird. You know, the way that you have to attach it at the bottom here, you know, with these brackets and, and getting getting the Allen wrench in there, the Allen key to, to tighten those screws, it's not exactly easy. 
Um, and then there's a tensioner bolt, bolt that goes in between here. So it's, it's kind of awkward getting the belt on, but um, I believe we do have it on uh, properly at this point. So this is a good stopping point for tonight. Tomorrow's Friday, followed by the weekend. So hopefully by the end of the weekend, this sucker is up and running. So we will see you then. Hey, how you doing Duff here? We are on day three of the build. And uh, last night we got the Y axis finished and it looks like the next step is working on the X axis. We're gonna start plowing into this. My goal is to have this done this weekend, so I need to get busy. Moving along here, um, this this uh, was a little difficult to get together. First of all, you have to press bearings into each side of this, and then you put the bearings on the rod, and then you got to press the rods into the 3D printed parts. So that's uh, that's not exactly easy, but I think I have them on there okay. Now we're working on the x-axis motor. All right, the x assembly is done for now. That's that was a much shorter uh, instruction set than the y the y axis. So next we're moving to the z axis. And again, this this is only 11 pages, so this one shouldn't take too long either, hopefully. Moving along with the uh, Z-axis assembly, just installed these mounts here for the, uh, the Z-axis motors, and I assume I will be mounting these there very soon. It's going well. This is fun. I mean, it's just you know, there's a couple of spots that are a little tricky, but the instructions are so good and the parts labeling so good that um, you know, it really it really helps a lot. See how far I can get tonight. We are installing the last of the smooth rods. Cautions you to be very, very careful in doing. Evidently these linear bearings, it's very easy to pop some of the balls out of the middle of them. So you need to try to be as straight as possible and don't overly, overly force it or so it seems. Okay, this is my stopping point for Friday evening. The Z access is now complete. So I've got um, X, Y, and Z, but now the next section is the E access, which access, which stands for extruder. And that is 55 pages long. So that's going to be a long one. So I think we uh, call quits for tonight. Tune in for uh, the next episode. How you doing, Duff here? Welcome to day, I don't know, what. when did I start this, Cindy? Which day? I don't remember. Two days, yeah, I've, I've, I've built for two days and um, we're in day three. You may notice that I've moved. I'm out uh, in my office and the reason I moved the whole table here and the reason I'm doing that is the next step is uh, assembling the extruder, which is um, the most difficult part of the build. When you go through each uh, section, I'm looking at the online manual right now. When you go through each section, it, it rates the difficulty. Everything I've done to this point has been either easy or moderate difficulty. The E access assembly is uh, listed as very difficult, which makes me very excited. So we're gonna do it here. And the reason I wanna do it here is because I have the online manual up and then I can, I can make the pictures bigger so I can see very clearly what I need to do because there's a lot of parts involved in this, a lot of parts. So this is a very crucial part of the of the build. Not that anything is not crucial, really. Everything you're doing is crucial, but this is, um, if you mess this one up, uh, it's gonna be a pain to fix. So we're gonna try to do it right. All right, so I'm stepping along here. This is where we're at right now in the extruder assembly. Um, it's. It's uh, it's tedious as as they say, but luckily you know they 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 chop it into small uh, steps. So you know you just you just take it one step at a time. Don't look at don't look at everything at once. And um, I'm I'm moving along here. I got the hot end in. I have the extruder motor attached. Um, and now it's just we have to be very careful with our wire management. 
that's something that they stress and stress and stress again. But I think it's going okay. I'll, uh, I'll check back when I have some more significant progress to report. Hey, it's been a little while. It's now Sunday, and I've spent a lot of time doing this e-access build, aka the extruder. Um, this is the most difficult part of the build, and it takes a very long time, and you need to follow the instructions exactly. Very, very important. Uh, the good news is they break it down step by step, so you're just doing small steps at a time, and when you're all done, this is what you wind up with. Got my extruder, my direct drive extruder on the x-axis. Of course, you don't actually know if it works until you're completely done, but hopefully it is. Got all my wires for the sensors and motors and all kinds of fans, all kinds of miscellaneous stuff coming out here to the other end. And now uh, we move on to the home stretch, hopefully. All right, the next, the next step is uh, the LCD screen which uh, should be a walk in the park compared to building the extruder. Only 12 steps. The extruder, just uh, FYI, the extruder had 66 steps uh, to uh, complete that. So LCD screen time. We are currently attaching the heated bed to the platform underneath it. A little tedious, but uh, at this point of the build, uh, I'm pretty used to doing some tedious stuff. Uh, there's a total of nine of these. You have to basically take the little spacer and slide it underneath, and then use the Allen key to align it with the hole underneath, then stick the screw in, and then tighten it slightly. And once they're all in, you go back and, and tighten them in a very specific order. But it's going well. I also have the um, control panel on. So uh, once you get past the extruder, uh, it's, it's pretty much downhill from there, you know, difficulty wise for sure. So I'm not sure if I'll get it all done today. It depends how much time I want to dedicate to it, but uh, I can at least see the finish line. Okay, we're getting down to the nitty gritty. Got the hotbed on, have the power supply mounted. Uh, working on the system board, the logic board. Again, utilizing 3D printed parts. Again, if, if um, I sent you, I'll include the, the online ma um, instruction manual just so you get a sense of what this looks like because it looks pretty freaking terrifying, but we are, we are getting there. We are getting close. Okay, we have the power supply buttoned up, including the cover. We have routed the wires underneath the frame of the printer. We have the logic board mounted. We have a number of the power, we have all the power connections connected. And now it's just uh, plugging in like the the uh, stepper motor cables and the control panel. And we're getting pretty damn close here, guys. All right, I am at the point where I am installing the spool holder, believe it or not. So let's see here. I'm trying to make sure I have it correct. So it actually leans towards the back, okay. Let the two sit in the frame and then press in the direction of the arrows. Obviously we're really close. Okay, this thing is technically assembled. Basically now it's all I have to do is the pre-flight check. But everything is as it should be. Actually everything is not as it should be because I somehow missed or either lost or did not have one of the spacers for the hotbed tray, so I don't have a screw there. I'm gonna have to see if I get lucky and find the spacer. If not, I'll have to get one, but I think it'll be okay without it. But uh, power supply's in place. The uh, main board, lots of wires, lots of cable management required. But all we gotta do now is get ready to try to do a test print, man. And I sure hope it works. All right, here we go. We are trying it on for the first time after uh, four to five days of work. But nothing's smoking, and I just picked it again. Okay. Let's 
Oh, you hit the button to actually do it. Okay. Would you like me to guide you through the setup process? Yes, do that. They're gonna self-test itself. All right, good, do that. Here we go. Extruder fan, okay. This is unlike anything I've ever done with any other printer. I've never had a automated setup routine. All right, we're testing the print fan. All right, it's okay. Checking the x-axis. All right, it's moving. It's good. It's making sure it has full travel, I guess. X is okay. All right. Can it move the bed? Yes, it can. Beautiful. Now it's testing the Z. We're checking the bed. It's heating the bed. I see the the LED for the bed light. You don't need to, you don't need to see a step by step. I think the next thing you need to see is uh, this thing actually printing something. So let's get to that. Still going through the setup routine. Alright, here we go. We are doing a test print for real. I just went through the setup routine. This is some file that's on the card. I doubt that I'm going to let it finish, but we're going to see how it goes. Huh. I have to tell you, I am kind of amazed that something that was in just a box of parts actually is functional at this point. Even though in retrospect, I don't know that I would, uh, uh, in the future, having done this once, I think once is enough, and I think I would uh, spend the other, the uh, extra $250 and just get one that's already put together, but uh, it's been a good experience. Yeah, that, that first layer there looks good. Not sure how well you can see it on the GoPro. This is the PLA Buddy, whatever that means. Looks like it's, a, it's roughly a two hour print. So wow, look at that, this thing works. Man, oh man, that's crazy. Cindy, yeah. well, when did we start this? Was it Thursday? Yeah. Okay, so we started this on Thursday and uh, today is Sunday evening. So I'm trying to guesstimate like how much time I put into this. Probably, what, eight hours maybe? All together, I bet, I'm guesstimating. It feels like like about eight hours over those four days, but it uh, looks like it was successful. It's awesome. So anyways, if you found this video interesting, I sure did. I found the process interesting. A little, little intimidating, but interesting. And uh, I do feel uh, like I accomplished something getting this thing working. So if you found the video interesting, please give it a big thumbs up. If this is your first time visiting the channel, please consider subscribing. This will be posted on the Duff channel and also on my um, dedicated 3D channel, which has seen very, very little action lately, even though I still do a, a lot of 3D printing. So uh, if this is your first time visiting the channel, please consider subscribing. Feel free to leave your comments, suggestions, ideas, and thoughts below about what you thought about the Prusa MK3S build. And I will, um, I'll be including a link to the build process, the instructions, just so you get a, a better idea of, of what's involved. And uh, hopefully this printer is as awesome as everybody says it is. So we will find out. That's all I have for you for now. Until next time, Duff Man out.